Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a great day. We're starting off today's episode on top of the giant hot air balloon that we built in the last episode. And if you haven't checked out that episode, please do go back and give that one a watch because I was really, really proud of the time lapse when it came together in that video. I think that came together super well. I'm really happy with this build. I still need to do a little bit of work on the basket and maybe do a little bit of mob proofing around here because there is a creeper has apparently fallen onto this mechanism. Although, did I just kill it or did it wander off down into the bowels of this? I'm slightly worried about that now. <laughs> I worry that maybe that creeper got away with it. But no, it looks like we're in the clear. Looks like it didn't make its way down into here to explode stuff after all. So <laughs> I think I managed to hit it with that arrow in the end. Or maybe I knocked it down onto the... It seems like I knocked it down into the swamp. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So uh, as I was saying in the last episode, I was having a bit of trouble lighting up the area inside this balloon and so today we're going to remedy that with a solution that a lot of people suggested in the comments and one that I actually kind of realized that I could have done after I had finished the edit of that episode and that is to cover the insides with carpet. Now carpet is a wonderful thing because it's a block that kind of takes up a small amount of a block much in the same way that a slab does and it can actually prevent mobs from spawning because they need a full block in which to spawn and this actually doesn't count as a full block. It, the mobs generally can't spawn on carpets or places that have like string or redstone on them because the block is already taken up by something else. So one of the things we can do inside of here is cover the entire thing with carpet and that means we could eliminate the need for torches in here entirely. Now as I mentioned the torches here aren't actually affecting the light level in the darkroom spawner so it's not having any trouble spawning stuff but the the main thing here is just to make sure that nothing spawns inside of the balloon itself so that it's uh it's not going to have any problems whilst we are AFKing and like reducing the rate of mobs spawning in the dark room and falling by just having stuff spawn around here. Of course, there's no actual need to carpet it with the same color wool because we won't be coming up into the balloon all that often. But yeah, I feel like I'm going to do it just for the sake of vanity. In fact, it might even be better to do it with a different color of carpet. That way I could tell which areas were carpeted and which weren't because the problem with the carpet is it blends in all too well with the wool blocks and it becomes difficult to see which areas I've already covered. And this got me thinking about a great topic for today's episode. Today we're going to cover a little bit of how you can conceal lighting in your builds because if you look around a lot of my builds you'll find a lot of torches just spammed everywhere like this and after a while I tend not to notice them I just kind of recognize them as a necessary evil they are just there to protect me from unnecessary mob spawns and unwanted mob spawns but in the grand scheme of things when we're putting together a big town like this one of the things ideally you want is to have the torches have some sort of artistic purpose. You want them to be placed around in places where it would be natural to find torches and you don't want to find torches just kind of resting on the ground like this because even in medieval times in real life that's not really what would happen. So today we're going to take a look at some fun ways that you can conceal lighting in your builds. And we're mostly going to cover this for interiors but I'm also going to throw in a couple of neat ways that you can conceal lighting outside as well. And outside is kind of the place that you'll be placing a lot of torches maybe in a grid so that you don't get any mob spawns in a large area like this when you want to plan a build. That's the kind of thing that people do quite early on most of the time and I tend not to partly because I sleep all the time so I don't really need to worry about mob spawns but also because when the mobs do spawn occasionally they're far enough away from whatever I'm building because I've lit up the area around it as I go that they're not usually an inconvenience. But when it comes to having a large city built up you want to avoid things like creeper explosions as often as possible. So having con some concealed lighting around the place prevents mobs from spawning regularly and it could be a pretty good idea. Now one of the first things you can do is not to conceal the lighting at all, but in fact to embrace the lighting, to give the lighting a home in your build. And that's one of the things I tend to do with the torches. We discussed this in the episode where we covered building the blacksmith's guild and doing the interior. And I really like the torch bracket kind of design there. They're just having an item frame with either a slab or a stair or some kind of block that sticks out from the frame in 3D and will look like it is holding the torch in place. You can do this with such a variety of materials because there are so many slabs and stairs and so forth out there. And it's really nice to customize those a little bit depending on the palette you're using for your builds. Now I've got a shulker box with me that's got a lot of other options for this. So we're gonna go over a few more. Let's come out here into the foyer where obviously for a start, we have a torch right here in the center of the room. That's something we want to eliminate and we want to make sure that this area stays well lit. For a start, we could put a torch back here 
behind the counter, because that's a place that we won't often go, although it is still possible to see the flame and the particles from the other side of that. So there are a couple of other ways we could conceal some lighting back here that would provide the same amount of light as a torch, but would make it a little bit less obvious. And we're going to start by placing down some red carpet back here and concealing some glowstone underneath it. This is something we already did on top of the balloon where we wanted to conceal a little bit of lighting up there. It's nice to have a little carpet back here for the receptionist, but it's also a great place to conceal some lighting. And remember that torches give off a light level of 14. If you're standing in the block that the torch is sat on, that's 14 light. And glowstone gives off a light of 15 from the block that it's in, but obviously because it's a solid block, you can't occupy the same space as it. So when you're standing here on top of it, it gives you 14 block light, which is the same as having a torch here would. And the light from that actually covers a few steps away from the reception desk so that now that area is lit up and we don't need to worry too much about it. However, if we step towards the door, you'll start to find that maybe a couple of seven block light areas creep in here and there. So one thing we could do is set up another carpet either side or maybe around the entrance to the door here so that the guests have maybe a doormat to wipe their feet on or something like that. We could do the same thing over here. Let's go with a jack-o'-lantern this time around because jack-o'-lanterns might be a little bit cheaper for you than glowstone. If you don't feel like going to the nether or trading with villagers, all you need is a simple pumpkin farm and a bunch of torches and you'll have yourself a jack-o'-lantern. We've got a nice little entryway to our reception area here and we've easily concealed some lighting underneath that. Not to mention the the fact that the mobs wouldn't be able to spawn on this carpet anyway because as Apple mentioned they can't spawn on carpet. Let's come up here to the next floor where we've got this wide expanse of ceiling. We have some fun functionality that we can build in here because the ceiling is made up of daylight sensors and as I mentioned before I really like them as a ceiling tile texture but they also have the added bonus of being redstone components and anything adjacent to them if they are emitting a signal can be powered. So let's take one of these out and put a redstone lamp up here and of course this one is being stubborn and staying up there. There we go we'll replace that we'll put a redstone lamp up here and because it's adjacent to a power component and the, the daylight sensor is actually emitting light even though it doesn't have access to the sky because it thinks hey it's daytime right now that's lighting up the area thanks to the redstone lamp there and of course while the light up here isn't necessarily going to reach all the way to the floor if i take out this torch here you'll see it isn't super bright underneath this it's like 11 block light directly under this thing which is not nearly as much as it would be if it was lighting from the floor. However, if we break the floor, then that's the ceiling of the room below. So we can either organize it so that there is lighting in the floor here and in the ceilings of the room below, or we can set up lights every so often in the ceiling and maybe take out a panel here where the block light would start to dim a little bit and then just keep doing this every couple of blocks until we have a row of redstone lamps. And it's not necessarily concealed in the ceiling, but it's still making the light into a kind of feature of the building itself. One other advantage, of course, is that it means we get to reclaim some of these daylight sensors, which are, as I've mentioned in the other episode, pretty expensive. So it's nice to get some of those back. There we go. This floor is now pretty evenly lit and I can probably even take out some of these torches around the sides and still benefit from all of the light that's coming from those redstone lamps in the ceiling. That's perfect. I didn't really like the row of torches that was there already, so it's a good thing to be able to get rid of those. Same with this one. Let's just check that some of these alcoves are still have adequate light. Yeah, I think we should be okay removing some of the light sources in here now. Of course, because these are daylight sensors, some of them are actually going to turn off during the night <laughs> because it's actually possible for them to detect that it's nighttime if there is skylight coming through from the upstairs floor, which I think there still is thanks to some of the slabs and stuff that are open there. So what we want to do is right click on one of the daylight sensors nearby to some of these redstone lamps. And what that's going to do is convert the daylight sensor into a moonlight sensor, meaning that it's going to give redstone current when it's dark outside as opposed to when it's light. Of course, if you wanted to go one step further and conceal some of these redstone lamps in the ceiling, you could always consider putting trap doors over them. These trap doors give a 3D kind of dimension to the ceiling, making it look like there are little light fixtures up there. And while they do conceal the block like so, you can still see through it and they don't actually block light at all. This is even true of solid trapdoor designs like spruce trap doors. So if you wanted to put one of those every couple of blocks on top of that, then that would be a decent design decision as well as 
concealing the fact that there is lighting there. We can eliminate these torches either side of the door here by hiding some more lighting in plain sight in the reception area. What I'm going to do is grab a couple of pistons and take advantage of a neat little trick involving item frames and pressure plates now that item frames can be placed flat on any surface as well as on walls and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop on a piston and have a redstone lamp attached to that. Now I will need to make a couple more redstone lamps because I've just put all of mine in the ceiling up there. But luckily I had my redstone shulker box on me so that's not a problem, right? We're going to put some redstone lamps in here. We're going to have them attached to pistons coming out of the floor like so. We're going to remove a block there, probably pop in a spruce plank there. And we're going to have the piston set up here with the redstone lamp on top of it. But the redstone lamp is actually going to end up in this block here. Now we're going to activate the piston using a lever, which we should have plenty of in this box. And that's going to depower the redstone lamp once it's out of the range of the lever. But we're going to repower it again using a pressure plate and an item frame. These two can now occupy the same block. And if you stand on the pressure plate once, this is going to take a quick jump up here because I, uh, <laughs> I think I have too low of a ceiling in here to be able to get up onto it. There we go. Once that is depressed, once the pressure plate has been pushed down, the item frame, because it is an entity, is keeping that in place, meaning that if we remove the lever and remove this stuff around it, the block is going to stay powered. And it also powers the piston because pistons can actually receive power through the piston head once they are extended. Now, unfortunately for those folks of you who play on Bedrock, I'm afraid I think this trick only works on Java thanks to the way pistons get powered. Oh, I think I've <laughs> placed the item frame a little bit too high there. Place it on the block like that. There you go. That should be working now. We can take away the lever. But yeah, I think this trick only works in Java because it's about how pistons pistons receive power. The piston head being powered by the redstone block above it, the, the, the redstone uh, lamp rather, and because that's been directly powered, I think that's only that's a trick that only works on Java Edition, I'm afraid. In fact, now we've got the lamps either side of the doorway, I'm going to remove the jack-o'-lantern that was there and actually <laughs> I think I'm going to put back what I had there before because I didn't like the carpet as much. I think it's kind of nice having the wood leading into there and the stone floor. So that's that all fixed up and that adds quite a nice little dynamic look to the entryway. You could also place some daylight centers on top of the redstone lamps here and those would activate them as well, although they would still switch off when it was daytime outside and that's kind of something else that you can add to the city when you're around the place say for example that you want to set up a a, a lamp post of some description in here you could let's let's just make a, a fairly short one here for now because i don't have the materials on me and i haven't decided what kind of lamp posts i want to build around this city if any but we can always just pop a redstone lamp on top of there add a daylight detector on the top there and then when it detects daylight it's going to switch on if it detects moonlight like that, if, you, if we invert the daylight sensor to a moonlight sensor, it's going to stay switched off until nighttime. So if you have a bunch of these around your city and you have them set to moonlight detecting, it's actually going to turn all the lamps on once it gets dark, which is a really great way of not having to worry too much about lighting during the day, but instantly mob proofing your town at night. Before we leave the comfortable environment of the Blacksmith's Guild, let's actually set up something else here that you can use for a little bit of lighting that is a new thing for 1.14 and actually feels a little bit special as a result. We're going to set up a little table over here and using these acacia trapdoors, we're going to build a kind of aquarium style thing on top of the table here. I'm going to surround that one there with two trapdoors so that they fold up like so. And we're going to put in, if I've got my bucket of water, I think I have it in here. Yes, there we go. We're going to put in some sea pickles in this corner. You know, you may remember from the coral episode that sea pickles can be found in coral reefs and one sea pickle gives off a light level of six and then for each additional sea pickle you get an extra three lights so that's six nine 12, 15, and you can see that the room actually visibly brightened around it. So you can imagine that this is kind of like a fish tank or something like that on the desk over here. There we go. So changing the uh, design of the table up a little bit, just so it looks slightly more natural to have an aquarium kind of sat there in the corner. But yeah, if this is going to be a waiting room, it'd be kind of nice to have a little fish tank in the corner. Unfortunately, if we put a live fish in here with the sea pickles, it's probably just going to flop out of the top of here and end up suffocating in the, in the open air around it. But yeah, it's kind of nice to have a little light source. We could probably even remove this torch now that these sea pickles are over there providing light to this whole area. Of course since the ceiling here is pretty high and it's not going to interfere with our peripheral vision we could probably add in some kind of like ceiling lamp here. We could add in some trap doors around the outside of a glowstone block like so and just fold those up to make a little box light 
like that. And that looks quite cool just hanging from the ceiling like this. That adds a little bit of glow to the area and means that we might be able to remove some of these torches. These bushes on either side are also a really great place to conceal some lighting. If we maybe dig down underneath here so that we can add a lever to the underside of a redstone lamp. I think redstone lamps would look better underneath here than glowstone. They'd be a little bit less obvious anyway. So if we add a lever to the side of this block, that's going to power that. And if we come back up here, place the note block underneath there. Of course, the note block isn't making any sound still because there's a block above it, but that's going to add in a little bit of lighting there. And all we can do is put the spruce trap doors back on there. And you don't really notice that a great deal. It's pretty obvious now because we've just done it, but that's not something that you would necessarily even glance at if you were walking down into this room. So another great way of providing a little bit of light to this area without having torches on the walls everywhere you go. Having any sort of wall decoration is a really great way to conceal lighting too. So I'm going to put a lamp or two behind here. I could probably just spare a jack-o'-lantern for this one because it's not going to be super important what kind of lighting source we have behind here. And then all I need to do is block this off with something or other and we can pop a painting up here like so. And then that's going to provide a great way of concealing the lamp behind there while letting the light shine through. And there, thanks to the size of this space, we basically eliminated all torches from that end of the room without having to worry too much about the positioning of everything. We'll probably put a couple of item frames on the walls around here, maybe do something different with this torch, although looking at it, it doesn't look like that's going to get particularly dark either. So that's not too bad. This one up here will probably need something, but we could do something similar over here with a painting underneath here because this is at ground level outside. So we could always put another jack-o'-lantern in there, maybe cover it up with a spruce trap door in this case. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. Moving on into the storage room, there are a couple of really great places that we can conceal lighting in here. For a start, we could put a jack-o'-lantern at the bottom of this barrel of water because that's not going to be visible from the outside unless you walk right up to it and then look down into it. Likewise, pistons are actually a transparent block and this varies a little bit from update to update. Sometimes the collapsed piston, the, the kind of the non-extended piston, the regular piston block becomes opaque and can't have lighting kind of shining through it but occasionally that change happens and then gets reverted again. Usually when a piston is extended it becomes transparent and you can see light through it because it's not a solid block anymore. That's another fun trick we could use out here to decorate our city paths as long as we can be confident that the pistons will stay transparent. All we'd need to do is set a jack-o'-lantern underneath here like so, maybe dig down one more block, yeah there we go, and if we can add a piston inverted on top of that like this and then pillar back up here with the dirt and pop one of those in like so that's a block kind of similar to the ones that i've been using to line the paths around here but it's actually going to give off light during the day and at night it's going to have a 13 block light which is only one less than a torch so if you space them out pretty well you can actually light up the environment like this pretty easily up here in the blacksmith's guild is another great opportunity for concealed lighting these armor stands and while the ones over here are in a glass case and i still plan to do that with the ones on this side as well i thought while these are exposed i would show you guys how to conceal lighting using an armor stand now much like an item frame an armor stand is an entity that doesn't necessarily take up the space of this block which means you can actually place a torch inside the frame of the armor stand. Now you might have a bit of a hard time getting it back again without destroying the armor stand entirely, but what that means is that if you've got an armor stand where it's got shoes and trousers on it, that usually means that you can conceal a torch inside of it there. If you don't have the trousers on it, like if I take the trousers away from this one, it looks kind of funny with bare legs. If I put that one there, then you can still see the torch. But then if you put the leggings back on, it's, even with the chest plate off, it's actually concealing the majority of that torch and you can just barely see the smoke particles coming up there. If you add the chest plate back on, the smoke particles are still visible because they'll travel quite a distance, but that's a great way of concealing lighting. If you've got armor stands around, you can just pop a torch underneath there. You would never know it was there, but this is going to give off a faint glow and it's going to light up the area around it. Another great way of concealing lighting outside is with the use of leaves. Leaves are going to be pretty much everywhere if you want to make your builds look a little bit more natural, like there are bushes and stuff growing up around them, and leaves can actually be a pretty valuable way of hiding glowstone and, and light sources. As we saw in there we could always put a redstone lamp underneath these but if you want to go one step further you want to make sure that the lighting source is not going to be visible to people just kind of casually walking past because if you put it there then it would be a little bit more visible say if I put a jack-o'-lantern like there you're going to be able to see that there's this bright orange thing underneath the grass what some people like to do is put the jack-o'-lantern one block down like so and then put some glass over the top of it whether that be green stained glass to make it look like it blends in with the uh 
bushes a little bit more or whatever kind of color of stained glass you have to hand as long as it doesn't stick out too much and that one being as it's gray stained glass fits in quite well with the building there and it sort of blends in as you walk past you'd never really know there's lighting there but during the, the night time it's going to be 12 block light coming out from here which is going to get at least around these spawnable blocks around the outside here maybe we could pop another one down there as well and it'd perform the same function you don't just have to do this around your builds, of course. You can even put some concealed lighting out in the open using bushes like so. We'll pop a jack-o'-lantern down here like this. We'll fill this whole section up with bushes like that. We could even use a light source like a torch or something that's a little bit more subtle than a bright orange jack-o'-lantern, but you, you get the idea. There's a, a little bit of flexibility with this stuff. And for watery areas like the park we've got over here, we could even add a few sea pickles into the pond over here to brighten this up a little bit and make sure that nothing spawns around the edges. We could also put some glowstone or anything like that underneath here if we wanted to, but I feel like the sea pickles actually look a little bit nicer in here. And if we spruce up this pond a little bit maybe by bone mealing under the surface of the water so we get a little bit of seagrass growing they blend in really nicely and we can just have that look like a natural amount of pond life now that it's gotten dark out here you can really start to see the difference this is making around the edges of the builds here and underneath the eaves of the building is kind of where we don't want stuff to spawn at all or at least that's that's where stuff tends to run and hide during the day if the sun starts to come out again so ideally if we can prevent mobs spawning underneath here then it's going to be even better for us because we won't have to worry about mobs surprising us when I walk out of the blacksmith's guild. I've actually been meaning to widen the path out a little bit here because I feel like that part walking towards the blacksmith's guild now that we know that this is going to be quite an important building it gets a little bit narrow in places so we're probably going to do a little bit of quick terraforming around here just to make it look a little bit more the way I want it. And now we've gone over a few of these consider how many different light emitting blocks there are in the game because there's actually a lot more than you would expect. We've overlooked things like beacons and conduits which actually give off a light level of 15 in much the same way as a glowstone block or a sea lantern would. Sea lanterns we haven't even touched on at all and I find they're slightly better for lighting up modern builds or stuff that uses a colder color palette like the prismarine stuff. Likewise end rods are actually a really nice light source but I don't tend to use them all that much because they're better off in modern builds. Not only do they have this very kind of modern you know, crisp, clean lines to them. They give off these sparkling particles, which are a little bit different from the wavering, flickering flame of a torch. So I kind of prefer to have these end rods in very specific places. One way you can use those though, is if you want to have like a desk lamp or something like that, you can just put something like this. You can put an end rod on there with a carpet over the top of it and it just looks like a, a a fairly like minimalist looking and a little bit square desk lamp but that's that's one option if we hadn't lit up the receptionist's desk already i would probably consider putting one of those in we haven't even considered stuff like fire, which obviously if you've got fire spread turned on on your world still, then it's going to be a bit of a problem nearby all of this wood and burnable stuff. But if, like me, you've turned the fire spread in your world off, or if you want to isolate it by surrounding it with stone and making sure there's no wood nearby, then fire can be a pretty effective light source. Much like the other light sources we've been working with so far, it gives off a light level of 15. And if you want to put it in a kind of local fire pit, if we wanted to have like a little campfire burning out here, or if we wanted to have you know braziers of kind of coals burning throughout the day and night then that'd be a good place to start you can have wall sconces in large stone builds and stuff like that there are creative uses for fire to help light places up and it really gives the place an atmosphere as well in a way that some of the other stuff doesn't because fire is animated it feels dynamic it's giving off particles it feels a little bit more alive that way lava is another one that does the same thing although <laughs> given the enormous destructive potential of lava i definitely recommend only using that if you you can make sure it's going to be very well contained. And if there is a reason to use them nearby, you can also use stuff like magma blocks. Magma blocks naturally have a light level of three. They naturally give off a kind of very faint glow, but they have this interesting property where they retain the light level of the last light source that they, they kind of interacted with. So for example, here, they're actually getting light directly from the sky, but I've also placed a torch underneath this little vein of magma blocks that we've got here in the road. And that is lighting it from below, meaning that it always constantly is exposed to that light level 
and it means that the light level around here stays constant, which means without having any torches around here, this whole section of magma blocks is giving off a pretty high light level all of the time. So those are just a few creative ways that you can change up the lighting in your worlds to get rid of some of those torches, <laughs> to get rid of all of this stuff lying around out here in the open and use lighting in a way that feels like it fits a little bit more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's been a bit of a different one. I haven't done much in the way of progress on this one, but it's the end of the week and I'm thinking like we're going to wind down and do some big projects over the weekend and heading into next week. So that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.